In this video, we're gonna install this door into that opening. And we're gonna do it right now. So you might be wondering why I'm installing this door at this stage of this remodel. This room is gonna be completely gutted. Just like every room in my house, I'm gonna take out all the old insulation, all the old wiring, and put everything back brand new. I don't even have drywall on this wall. I just framed this wall when I was doing the hallway stuff. If you follow my videos, you may have seen that. If not, consider subscribing. But typically you would have drywall on the wall and then you do this with all your finish work. You would throw the door in and then do all the trim and paint and everything done. But I'm gonna do it now. The main reason is because I have a toddler and he likes to do everything with dad, which is great. But Remodels can get a little dangerous. If a two by four or a piece of drywall goes flying, that little baby gate is not gonna do anything. I would much rather have to fix a brand new door than have my son get hurt. That's the main reason. The other one is to contain all the dust and debris to this room as much as I can. And it's always nice when you can just shut the door, you have a room that you don't really need to just work at your own pace and get it done. So this might be helpful for you if you are installing a split jam door, which is what this is, in a wall that is partially unfinished. Maybe you have a basement where you have a utility room or storage or any kind of room really where you have drywall on one side and then you have framing on the other side. Hopefully this video will help you out. Maybe you're just watching it for fun. Either way, I hope you enjoy. I don't know what it is, but over the past 10 years, I've been getting doors from the big box stores. Won't say which ones. They might be orange, they might be blue. Might be something else. And they just can't seem to get the trim on these right. So I know it's not the store's fault. It's whatever factory makes these doors. Whether you get these from a place where you know they're perfect every time, or you're getting them from a place where they do mess up the trim, just look them over before you buy them. So what you wanna look for is first, these staples. You can see this one is set in and you'll be able to putty that and paint it. And you wanna look at this reveal. From the jam to the trim, that's about a quarter inch. That should be even all the way around. I've seen it go flush with the jam and then go back to quarter inch like this over a couple feet and it just doesn't look good. That staple's good, that one's good, that one's good. You can see the reveal gets a little smaller here, but that's not terrible. And then check your 45s, make sure they look decent. That one looks okay. But this is what I mean. Right here, the staple, it's like in at an angle, it's sticking out. You're gonna have to set these. And it's an easy fix for the staples a nail set and a hammer, just tap them in and then putty them. But why can't you get that right? That's what you do, you make doors. Just double check. I'm not trying to complain too much. I just wanna make sure you guys look out for things like that so that it's not a pain and you get a decent product when you go to install one of these doors. When you pick a door out, just like everything else, it's up to you. The style, what trim you wanna put on it. This is a solid door instead of a hollow core door. Much more durable. It's textured, it's a six panel. You can get a flat, you can get one with the trim, without the trim. This is colonial casing. It's what I have throughout my entire house. The six panel textured is what I have throughout my house, so I'm matching it. Typically, it comes with satin nickel hinges. You could special order anything you want, brass, or you could change them out afterwards. But this is what I got. Another thing is left hand versus right hand swing. This is a left hand, and it'll say right on the door on a piece of cardboard like this, 3278 left hand. 32 inches wide, 78 inches tall left hand swing. So what that means is you take your left hand and you swing in towards the room, that's a left hand swing. If it was a right hand, it would be with your right hand, swing in to the room. As you can see, with this door, I want it to swing this way. So you can picture this door is gonna go just like this. When picking out the size of the door, you measure the rough opening. There's two different measurements. 
The 32 by 78 is the actual width and height of the actual door. So when you measure, you wanna make sure the door is gonna fit. And it'll say on here, fits rough opening, 34 and a quarter by 80. And if you're framing in for a door, I like to make it two and a half inches wider. If I want a 32 inch door, I'll make it 34 and a half inches. This says 34 and a quarter. Bigger for me is always better than ripping one of these two by fours out, especially if it's load bearing like this one is. You don't wanna rip down a header. I've done it before. So from floor to ceiling, go two and a half inches bigger than the actual 78 inch door. So that would be 80 and a half. This says 80. Again, you can always add a piece of plywood or whatever you have laying around to the sides or the top. Okay, let's get ready to install this door. You're gonna have to just cut these straps off. And then on the side here, you're gonna have some screws, some staples. These ones are the big ones you need to get out. This is what holds the two pieces of the jam together. So go along and take those out, take these screws out on both sides. I like to take all these staples out so they don't interfere with anything and take all the packaging off. Then on the other side, where the handle goes, just leave that piece on for now and remove all the other ones. That's gonna keep it so the door doesn't swing open while you're trying to install it. All right, with all those staples and screws taken out, you can carefully separate this, just like that. If it seems like it's not coming off, there's probably some staples still there. So just be careful. And we can put that aside. There we go. And I can take my baby gate out. Yeah. I'm gonna cut this carpet back a little bit so that I have no interference when I go to install this. Carpet's obviously coming out anyways. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this one last piece of flooring off and just lift it up like this. And the reason I put that in there was basically just to protect this tongue on this piece of flooring because walking in and out of here you can damage this and you'll never be able to get another piece in there to lock in so whether i do this floor continuous throughout this room or i do another small piece and then a transition into a new floor at least this will be protected i'll cut this and put it back in just to protect this tongue after the door's in so in a perfect world, at this point, you could put your temporary pieces of drywall here, which I'll show you in a little bit. You could take your door, put it in, nail it, and then shim it and screw it like I'm gonna show you. But we have issues. Just by looking at this door, if you look at the wall right here, you can tell something is way off. And what it is, is this floor dips way down over here. I've done as much as I could in the basement to correct that, but the house was built in 46 and I'm not gonna do anything else to correct that, so we have to fix it with the door. The other problem we have here is more trim issues. If you see where they cut that trim, it's long. Same over here. And I don't think there's a reason for that. I would like to think that they do that for this reason. Like you can cut that and it drops down and then you can leave that one even. But I think that's a mistake. So I'm gonna have to correct that. But I also need to figure out how to put this door in so when it sits on the floor, 
it's nice and level and plumb. So a quick little trick to figure out how far off that is. I'm gonna take the door out. Put it aside, hello Coda. Measure from trim to trim, 37 and a quarter. And I'm gonna go find a nice straight piece of wood and cut it at 37 and a quarter. So I have a nice straight piece of scrap wood. That is the exact length here or width. I'm gonna put it in my frame where this would go, just about there. Then I take a two foot level. You can see how far off that is. So what you wanna do is hold that up to where this is level. And it just so happens that I already cut this at five eighths of an inch. And that makes that perfectly level. So what that means is, so I'm raising this up, which essentially means I want this piece of trim to sit flat down here. And then I want over here to cut off five eighths of an inch on this piece of trim and this jam. That's gonna drop that entire door down and make the bottom level, therefore making the side plumb. Now, a couple things with that is whenever you take the material off of here, you're gonna have a smaller gap at the bottom. So I will have to cut the door down, but I don't think I've installed any doors in this house that I didn't have to cut down. But the other thing is, is I'm gonna have to fix that trim and uh, measure it, make sure it's in the right place. But we know that measurement and I'm gonna set this up on some sawhorses so we can take a look. I have my door on the sawhorses here and this is why you don't wanna measure like from here, five eighths, cut it because you have that right there. What I wanna do is make sure these sides are even. So I'm gonna hook on here, but when I get down to the bottom, I'm gonna push up so it's tight here. I also wouldn't measure by hooking onto the trim because we know the trim isn't always perfect. So hook on there and then push up with the tape to the top of the jam and then go down here and you'll and you'll see that this is 78 and 13 sixteenths, just over 78 and three quarters. Do the same over here, hook on, pull the tape, and then push towards the top of the jam. And over here, it is 78 and three quarters. Pretty close, pretty close to 78 and 13 sixteenths. So we know those are good but these are off. So we wanna go by this, not the trim. So to start, I'm gonna get this side ready because I know that this is gonna stay right here, exactly where it is. I'm not gonna cut this anymore. I just wanna cut this trim even with this. So I'm gonna take some painter's tape, just so I don't mark this up too much or splinter the wood. I'm going to take my square and hold it nice and even to the jam so I can cut that trim off. So you can see this line is even with the jam. Take my circular saw and make that cut. Good. I'm gonna take this tape and reuse it. Just move it to the other side. Here. Take another piece of tape. Just work it in here. Just so I don't splinter that out. And make sure it's tight right here. Because that's where I'm measuring from. By the way, if you don't care about having a gap at the bottom of your jam, especially if it's in a basement or something, you can just hold the other side up and have that gap, 
but I want to have these tight even though I am going to do floor and I will be undercutting the trim which is just cut the trim and your floor slides in like this but speaking of that I know I'm at least going to do this thickness of flooring which is quarter inch and I know that five eighths taking five eighths off of here and having that even on the other side will make this door level. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this on the other side. When I install the door, it can sit on this piece, which means I can take this width off of the five eighths of an inch. So that will make three eighths. So if I take three eighths off of this side instead of five eighths, I can use this under there. I'll have a quarter inch gap, which will be fine for any type of floor that I do. And this will sit down to the existing floor nice and tight. That'll just be a way to not have to cut this down too, too much. It's only a quarter of an inch, but that way this trim will actually match the other door that's in the hallway, the, the top of it, which is something that's just my personal preference. So I'm gonna measure from here three-eighths of an inch right here that's what I'm gonna take off I have to use a smaller square over here because of this hinge and if I'm a little off no big deal I am like I said undercutting and down this way not gonna be much of a point to marking it I'm just gonna hold the saw as straight as possible and go as deep as I can to cut as much as this jam as possible. We'll see how it goes. I cut it this way. I can stabilize the blade a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. The way I like to finish this cut is with a coping saw actually, because it's such a nice fine blade. Whoops, that happens. So the trim on this side is nice and flush with the jam. And then on this side, I cut what I needed to uh, back. Again, no worries here. I'm gonna undercut the trim. That happens, but what I'm gonna try and do is not cut this door down right now. I'm gonna try and put it in first. I have a gap here. That was another reason to uh, add that quarter inch or take off that quarter inch from that measurement. So I should be able to install the door now. So a few other things I did here to prep is I have my drywall pieces here. And also, if your frame is pretty wide like mine, <laughs> you can add pieces like this I did on each side half inch drywall here drywall here it's a piece in the middle at the top and on the bottom and drywall that's gonna make it so this is sticking out the distance I need it to you see what I'm talking about <laughs> and these pieces are just going to make it easier for shimming and attaching it afterwards. <sighs> Let's get this door in. Before we install this door, make sure we take this piece out. This is the piece that holds the door from swinging open and closed. I have actually locked myself in a room because of that and uh, had to have somebody rescue me. Um, so don't do that. Some of these spin off. They have like this little nut. But this one looks like it just slides like that. And you just wanna hold this together, make sure it doesn't come falling apart when you reposition the door. Okay, I have a four foot level I'll put over here. I have my finish gun right here, ready to go with finish nails in it. Just make sure you have all of the stuff you need. The door, of course. into place. 
my little piece of flooring that goes down here. Now I have the door sitting there. I'll grab my finish gun. And these are just, these nails are gonna be temporary. We'll attach the door for real in a little bit. But to get it to where it needs to be, I'm just gonna put my four foot level on the hinges and it looks like I gotta push the top over like this, try and center it in the opening. I'm gonna nail the bottom, one nail, and then get this where it's plumb, one nail at the top. So I know that the door is plumb. I'll put one more nail right here. And that looks a lot better than it did before. So what I was doing was I took my level, held it against the hinges, made sure it was plumb, and put some nails right here and in the middle and on the bottom. And you can check the two hinges here too. Perfectly plumb. That is flat against the floor. And I have my piece here. It's raised up a quarter. That is exactly what I wanted. And now to get the rest of it secure, what you want to do is check this reveal. The reveal being the distance between the door and the jam, the gap right here. And you check the top here first because that is basically where it is on the bottom. It has a lot of room to play around with. So I like to match this gap up here. So you just make sure that's even all the way down. I'm gonna do the same thing. Put a nail in the middle and on the top and bottom. And by the looks of it, the only place I really have to fix is right in the middle of the top. Uh, it looks like this piece of trim is bowed a little bit. So I'll just have to put a shim in there and pull it down when I go to attach it. I can put my temporary nails in this side and then we can open it up. This little piece out and I already know what's gonna happen here but just to show you uh, we're gonna rub on the carpet a little bit I don't want to put too much pressure on that because this is a solid door and, the, and it's only held in by finished nails right now so I'm actually gonna cut this carpet out it's coming out anyways but I'm just gonna cut enough so I can swing the door open and closed Old carpet. Ew. Oh yeah. So I don't have to cut the door down right now. This is what the door looks like from the back side. Temporarily attached. And you'll notice I lined my pieces here up with the hinges so that when I put my shims in, I'll have something nice and solid to attach to. And then on this side, one on the bottom, middle, and top. At the top, put some shims in here. Tuck them right in there so that the screw actually goes through them. And if you have to pull this door over to make that reveal bigger, you can leave these shims loose and suck the screw right in. And the opposite, if you want to push that reveal over that way, you can make these shims real tight and just snug up that screw. And sometimes, if you're in a newer house where you have doors like this, where you suspect you may have had a shady builder, sometimes what they'll do is they'll take these split jam doors because they're real easy and they'll just put them in. They'll attach them with a bunch of nails in the trim, like I just did. Then they'll put this on, attach that with nails. Sometimes they'll put nails this way, but you really need to secure the door. So if your door is starting to hit the jam on this side, it could be because the door is not properly attached 
and it's falling down this way, hitting this. So if you have that problem, do what I'm gonna do right here to correct that. I got some two and a half inch satin nickel screws to match right here. Sometimes these doors actually come with the screws, which is nice. Not this one though. So I bought them. I'm just gonna run that screw right in, attach it right into the framing. Check my reveal. Sucking in a little bit more. That's perfect. Moving on to the next one. Same thing with the middle. Just get these shims in there however you have to. Just make sure they're gonna be behind the screws. You also wanna make sure that this jam isn't going like this. You can really tell at the bottom. Uh, if it is, you wanna suck it in with the screw. Just keep an eye out for that. And obviously make sure you're tight against that drywall. Good there. Cut these shims. Well, that's the most important part is getting those screws in. Now that entire door is supported by these nice long screws. Now right here, same thing. Make sure it's tight against this drywall. Get some shims in here right at the top. Check the reveal. Make sure the reveal's good. The top basically is gonna determine where your reveal is because that's the way the door was built. You can jam the shims in there a little bit to get everything tighter. Uh, but it kind of is where it is. So you go by this reveal. That's why I like to start at the top. So I'm just gonna put one nail in. You can put screws if you wanna fill them afterwards. I'm just gonna put one nail right here into the framing. This right here. If you have to, you can just kinda knock this over a little bit. Either way. So I can tell that this jam is a little skewed this way, so I'm just gonna hold it like that. Nail it right where those shims are. And the bottom. And this two by four is a little twisted, so I'm gonna make sure I hold this out a little bit like this so that the door closes nice against the back side here. I'm gonna put a couple nails so that it stays there. So that gap looks nice and even on this side. And what I was trying to correct by pulling this trim out this way a little bit, because this two by four is a little crooked. So when I put my drywall on here, I want it to go straight and not follow the crookedness of the two by four. So I pulled this out a little bit so that back here, the door actually sits tight against the jam. I'll show you better on the back side, like this. So you want that nice and even all the way up, which it is. You don't wanna have a gap, say in the middle like this, and then the bottom and top tight. You want that to be all the same so it gets a nice tight seal. Now I just wanna correct the top because that over there is an even gap with that, but in the middle, it gets wider. So I just wanna put a two by four or something in there to make the top nice and even. Get some screws right in this two by four. And I am gonna get one screw in there. Okay, two by four in there, but this is what I noticed. I didn't do that when I put that two by four in. I put one screw right there, and this is why it cracked. There's a finger joint right there. Maybe I did pull it down too much. I don't know. 
I guess I'll just fill it with some Bondo and call it a day. That's cracked. And then I look over here. That's cool. If you're gonna fill it, why don't you fill it? And then <laughs> this 45. Luckily, I'm taking that off to fix it, but I guess this uh, solidifies my viewpoint of these doors. So if anybody knows where to get a higher quality pre-hung door, let me know in the comments. I'm not trying to complain, but the whole point of a pre-hung door is it should be easy, all set, ready to go, throw it in, and done. Uh, not have to fix the way that it's built uh, now that I've done like every door in my house. Any suggestions? Maybe you'll help somebody else out. Now I can attach the trim on the back side here, but remember we cut the door down, so I'm gonna have to cut that. So let me show you how to measure for that. So I have my trim set up on my sawhorses, ready to go. And I'm gonna take my tape and hold it to the floor right here. And then up at the top, I'm gonna measure to the bottom of that groove right there, 78 and three quarters. And then I can come over to my trim, hold my tape right there to the bottom of the jam. Down here, I can mark 78 and three quarters. And look what happened. I basically just have to cut this trim even with the jam. It's a little short, but that's okay. It's going to work. And do the same thing with the other side. If you're able to have a friend help you with this, you could take this right over to your chop saw and have them hold one end and cut it that way. Nice and straight cut, but I don't have any friends, so. I didn't do and see the reveal here that's even a little too much you see that line that's where I mean they even have a line that you <laughs> staple to it's not on the line that's probably a little less than three-eighths of an inch and then over here it's like maybe an eighth of an inch I'm never buying these doors again Will it fit? Wow, like a glove. It's almost the same height as this. That's what I wanted. And this one I can nail off for good. Start at the top, put a slight angle, make sure I get enough framing. And then I can go to the bottom, make sure this is tight to the drywall, and then make sure this is straight like this. So it's gonna be like that. Nail that. Same with this side. Nail the rest. And you can put a couple nails this way if you wanted. I'm going to do it one down here because this is the spot where the framing's twisted. So just put one right there. That'll attach this piece to this piece and the door into the frame. You can do that all the way around if you want to, which I actually might because I got to do so much repair on this thing that a couple extra holes isn't going to matter. Last but not least, the doorknob. Super simple. Put the latch in, doorknob. Strike plate. And the door is installed. Sorry if I complained a little bit in this video, that was not my intention, but 
it's in, I can close the door, I can go to town in this room, definitely stick around for that. I'm planning on making a lot of videos along the way, should be fun. If you want to check out more of my videos, you can click hereish and hereish. And if this is your first time watching my channel, definitely consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Get some shims in here, right at the top. Don't let them fall. Oh, the other thing here is. Oh, what the? Come on, guy.